Hello and welcome. This is a continuation of my Godot Very Simple Dissolve Shade tutorial and in that tutorial I've shown you how to do a dissolve texture which looks something like this. Now the issue of this is that you can only do this in the editor. I didn't teach how to do shader params in GD script so without that it's quite kind of useless and someone in my comments, Lumio Chromus, I hope I didn't butcher your name, asked me how would I do this. So in this tutorial that's what I'm going to teach you. I'll carry on from the last tutorial and I'll put that in the link in the description below. This is a very simple dissolve shader, I explained this in the last tutorial so if you want to know how it works please go there. I've added a noise texture and it's got some values I've inputted. Today I'm going to focus on changing the value in GD script so we've got like a little transition. So let's get into it. This is what the project will look like by the time we finish this tutorial. As you see when I press the spacebar it comes in and out. I can actually press spacebar quite quick to cancel the dissolve. So let's get into the code. I want you to attach your script to the icon. It extends sprite. We're going to define our variables. We've got a fader out equals false because it's currently not fading out and this will track if we're fading in or out. We want to get the shader params value which I've called shader value and to do that we're going to get the material of the texture which contains the sh shader then we're going to get the shader param and then we're going to put in the var name now you'll notice something when I do this which is a little bit confusing if I remove this and type get shader you'll notice it's not there it is there for some reason my IntelliSense isn't showing me it might show it for you I'm not sure but it is there and finally how fast we want the dissolve to go I've just chosen 0 0.03. We want a physics process which is going to handle our input. We're going to check if the spacebar has been pressed. And if it has been pressed, we're going to get the fade out boolean and then we're going to make it false of itself. For example, this will just switch from true to false or false to true. Now we're going to check are we fading in? If we are, we want to reduce it by the speed. Else we must be fading it out, so we want to increase it by the speed. You'll notice that that will go on forever, so it could go up to 10 and we don't want it to go past 1. So to stop that, we're going to use a clamp. So we make sure that the shader value is clamped by shader value from 0 to 1. So it can't go below 0, it won't go above 0. And finally, we want to apply the value to the shader param. So I'm going to type this out. We're going to go material.setShader. And as you notice, it's not there in my tail sense, but it does exist. And the value is called value. And I want to make, set that to shader value from GD script. I can press save. If I press start, and if I press spacebar, you can see it's faded out. Now it's fading back in. I think you can do return to, yes. So that's the most simplest way I can show you how to access a shader value. Or if we wanted to access this noise texture, for example, if you wanted to change the seed like Lumis Chromus has suggested, so let's get into that now. We're going to go back to the script. We want to define a new var. I'm going to call it noise texture. So this is getting this texture here. And you'll notice that we've got a noise open simplex attached. And we want to access that so we can get to seed. And we want to change period to. So by getting the shader param, we get these values by default put into this variable here. We'll access them and then we'll set the shader back to those params. I'm going to go to the bottom of the physics process and we're going to check that if the right key is being pressed then we're going to get the noise texture which is this here then we're going to get the noise which is this value here and we get the seed we're going to increase the seed by one this will change the look of the texture each time we press right but only by a little bit once we've done that we want to get the material which is the shaders attached to get the shader param noise texture which is here and we're going to assign it the GD script version which is updated. Now if we press play you'll only notice this while we're fading in and out so if I as you can see as I'm pressing right you can see it's changing. One thing you could do with this I guess is each time it, it fades out you could change the seed and as it fades back in it'll look a little bit different that way it, it won't look repetitive. So for good practice let's do it again. This time we're going to use left I'm going to get the noise texture, the noise, period, and I'm going to decrease it by one. Now I've done that, I need to set it back into the shader. The material, set shader param. 
know it's a noise texture and we'll feed it back the updated noise texture. Save this and now if I press left a couple of times you'll notice it's getting smaller and smaller. I prefer this look personally. So that concludes the end of this tutorial. Um, I think I've covered most things. If I've missed anything please let me know in the comments and I'll make sure I update it. Thanks very much. I'll see you soon.